Uh, welcome to a new video and we have to talk. This time we have to talk about Apple and the new iPhone 12 and why it is not selling so well and why the stock market from Apple is dripping down. And uh, yeah, I want to talk a bit, we could talk about the technical reasons why the iPhone 12 is not very popular, just like not even high refresh rate um, display and issues with uh, batteries being too small and the system being not very um, yeah, modern, I would say, looking also, like the big notch on the iPhone still available there, 3D scanning which might be not so optimum, optimal in this uh, times of the year. But I want to talk about something different. First of all, the notion that Apple usually wants to be like eco-friendly, but uh, then for this, for this eco-friendliness, I think it's just like a bit of hypocrisy because Apple uh, of course, granted, they just leave out the charger now in their cases, makes the cases a bit smaller, allows them to ship more phones. But the major issue is that they ship a cable which is like on the one end USB-C and on the one end lightning. So most of the iPhones sold so far ship with a charger that's as only USB-A as uh, one plug. So one major big problem I would say where people are like what the fuck is going on and how is this eco-friendly if you have to buy a separate charger or have to use an older cable preferably but the older cable does not support fast charging then. Hmm, so it is like for the customer it is like not a very good step in the right direction. So it's not a step in the right direction where I see it as being eco-friendly, especially as you have to pay for the charger. Or you have to get a charger that supports USB type C. Uh, or you have to get an, uh, an adapter plug, but then you don't have fast charging. So all of these annoyances with the new iPhone 12s. Then technology-wise, they are not really an improvement to the iPhone 11, of course, yeah, bigger, newer, greater processor and um, wider camera and a little bit bigger sensors in the cameras, but it's not in technology where I will see a big leap forward or something like this. And uh, Apple failed to react also to the coronavirus a bit, I would say by not including a fingerprint scanner like they do in their iPads where they have the new iPad which has a fingerprint scanner in the power button. So this is one thing where I would say it might be really the reason why Apple is like um, or the new, new iPhones are not so popular. The other one I think it could be could have something to do with the issue of non-repairability or the issue of Apple fighting the right to repair your phone. Let me get going a bit to tell you about this because this is what really drives me a bit of crazy. <laughs> Apple sells phones since years and they have like some kind of reputation to be re being reliable though I think that is like a reputation from the older Apple days where they built the first iPhones and the iPods still. They have this reputation of being reliable. But the issue that I see nowadays is first of all re reliability is going down in terms of Apple products. You can see this in laptops they have like the butterfly keyboard a problem that they did not acknowledge for years until they finally replaced uh, this uh, great new technology with something that works again and does not break so often. And the other problem is the fight against repairability. So what Apple does is uh, they did it already in the past where they don't allow you to get to certain chips. So if you have a third-party repair shop Usually you go to it and they can repair it, they have the chips and so on, they can just repair stuff. But Apple, on their latest laptops, MacBooks, they 
don't grant access to those chips anymore to those little repair shops so only certified apple shops have the right to get the chips or apple itself and on a new iphone it is even so far that you cannot replace the camera module anymore without getting to apple to certify this new camera mod module so one guy bought two iPhones, brand new iPhones, and just opened them up and tried to replace the camera module from one iPhone, from one iPhone to the other. Brand new, should work without any issues. But he ran into issues because Apple has some kind of software that makes it impossible. What is the goal of Apple here? Are they fighting those people who in China, I think there's only one guy in China who, <laughs> one guy, in China who got all the spare parts for iPhones and built his own iPhone? I think this is not really a big problem, I would say. Because Apple have other, has other means to fi figure out why uh, or how someone got the parts and if these are legit parts, if this is a legit iPhone or not. So what is the issue? The issue is that in the future those third-party repair shops that can repair your iPhone like in under a few minutes, under an hour sometimes, even if the camera, just take the example of the camera. If the camera is broken, just replace the camera with another module and it should work. Not possible anymore. So you have to rely on Apple and they have to get, they have to give you the green light. So certain countries, I'm here in New Zealand for example, I didn't see an Apple store, I don't think there's an Apple store here. So what do you do when your iPhone breaks with the iPhone 12? You have to have some Apple certified yeah, repair shop, otherwise it doesn't work. And what if this isn't Apple certified repair shop? They can replace the module, but your phone will never work cor correctly. Because the camera will just don't have certain features enabled. Because Apple just said, okay, we will disable these features if you put a third party. Not even a third party product, but it is an Apple original um, camera module but it was not put into the right phone. So Apple has, and it needs like real engineering effort to put a check in there that checks if the hardware is legit and to check if this was put into, or if this is part of a different iPhone. And they have to really, when producing the iPhone, be very, very clear when they're flashing the operating system or when they put the chips inside that they put the right camera module in the right iPhone. Otherwise, it will not work. Which is... It is really, really dangerous way <laughs> Apple is going here in terms of repairability. Just imagine for a second you have a car and you're not able or not allowed to go to a third party to repair this car. Even if it's a simple thing, just like changing the oil changing a belt or anything else you have to go to the manufacturer only they try to pull this off those car manufacturers but they failed in various different countries so there's a right to repair for cars for example it's unbelievable one guy was doing a compar comparison which i don't think is quite right but imagine you buy a house from apple in the future if apple sells houses intelligent houses even and some kid just uh, throws a rock through the window and the window is broken. So what you can do is just order someone to repair the window and let the kid pay or the, the parents for the kid. It's a bit stupid if it's your own kid, but uh, in general you get the idea. But in Apple's world it would mean you have to buy a new house, an Apple house, or you can only order a replacement from Apple and most of the time what they do is just give you a new house it won't happen but and I think this analogy is not quite right but I think the car analogy is quite right if you have a broken car if there's a part broken you can go wherever you want to go and they can repair it usually if it's a repair shop for cars and the same worked for smartphones as well for quite some time but Apple tries to fight it they don't want anyone else to fix your iPhone. They want it to do either themselves or they want to sell you a new iPhone. And just imagine if you have an older iPhone, let's see 5C or something like this, not supported anymore by Apple. By Apple, they don't have the parts eventually even. So let's imagine you have an iPhone, a brand new iPhone 12, and in five 
now let's say eight or ten years it is not supported by apple anymore and you don't get spare parts from apple no one else can repair it then if it breaks breaks if it's broken in this world we will live in 10 years probably not ideal i would say i don't like this world so this is one major problem with the iphone 12 and i think apple was going is going this real route with the iphone 12 and uh, further on with the 13 version and uh, ipad versions as well and laptops even and especially with the new arm laptops that will come in the future they will also go this route where you are not allowed to simply repair those and even if it's a very stupid little thing that broke that is broken there and yeah i don't know you can write me in the comments what you think about this uh, right to repair maybe and the fight against repairability and what do you think about the new iPhone 12? Are you going to buy one? Because I have the feeling somehow, okay, everyone is like, ah, oh, well, don't buy the iPhone 12 because it's like oh, nothing really new. And then it takes like maybe Christmas until Christmas. And then everybody, ah, oh, here, new brand new iPhone. I bought a new iPhone for Christmas. So I think the sales will go up again. Apple's uh, stock market will go up again as well. But I don't like it, <laughs> I have to say, because the new iPhone 12, um, technology wise I think Apple failed to deliver it and I also think that uh, in terms of diversity they are they don't know where they're running just imagine when Steve Jobs introduced the first iPhone it was one phone one phone then somehow Apple changed it to two phones so for example you had the iPhone uh, 5 then the 5s not two phones two separate releases but then there was a 5C, the first experiment, I would say, with a cheaper phone, cheaper iPhone. And then they had like iPhone 6, 6 Max or something like this. So they had two. Granted, I can understand it. You have a bigger phone for people who like bigger phones and you have a smaller phone for people who like smaller phones. But now Apple introduced four, four <laughs> new phones. So a mini version, a normal version, a Pro version and a Pro Max version. Why do you need four different versions? And all of them also very close in terms of pricing. And this creates, of course, for Apple itself, a, big of, a bit of a problem, a bigger problem than before, because before they had one phone and they had to only support one phone and it was easy to fix bugs and easy to get bugs. To, to, to test stuff but now if they have like four phones granted maybe they have the the inner workings the hardware are almost the same but still they have four phones it's a bit hard to support those and you can probably will see more bugs in those phones as well they have to create of course they have to fight against this by creating some kind of standard so they're using for example the almost the same i think they're using the same display for the pro version and the uh, normal iphone 12 version it's the same hardware with a different software or firmware which allows the pro version to get a little bit brighter this is i think my theory you can just write in the comments if, if i'm right or not but i think this is one way apple tries to like create this uh, less variation in their products in their hardware to have the control over it so this might be also one reason why apple is falling down a little bit because they are not sure anymore what people want or they are not even giving what people want so much granted people wanted smaller phones and bigger phone a bigger phone a pro version and maybe a cheaper version but not four different versions and this makes apple going in a route where several android manufacturers are also stuck in i would say where they have like middle class they have entry class middle class middle middle class and uh, pro middle class and they have the entry model they have a uh, pro model and they have a max model so you can see this with huawei you can see this with xiaomi and xiaomi especially they have like dozens of this is like every week isn't a new xiaomi phone is coming out somehow and uh, 
uh, there's no structure anymore and the the the, uh, uh, the the names of the phones are like super confusing at least on the iphone models is at least a little bit uh, uh, yeah, understandable like a mini model, a normal model, a pro model and a pro max model. Um, so that's basically everything for this little video. Um, I hope you enjoyed a little bit of this you know, walk in the park here, uh, University campus of Auckland and uh, write down in the comment section what you think about the new Apple iPhones and about the right to repair and everything else that you think Apple is doing right or wrong. And maybe your experience with Apple products in the past would be also very interesting for some at least. That's everything for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Until the next time. Bye.